Well, hey there, this is Mike, and today you are watching the very first video for my new website, backpackingearth.com. And uh, the website's all about my experiences traveling backpack style uh, around the world. In fact, later this month, I'll be leaving for uh, New Zealand to kick things off. So this is the first video of many to come uh, of my adventures seeking to shoot uh, some of the most scenic places on Earth. And, and I think we can all agree that New Zealand is a great place to start. So for the first video, we're going to take a look at uh, my rig, the, the Sony A7, and the Sony Smart Remote Control app, which I have become a, a pretty big fan of for the type of photography that I shoot. Uh, and the, the app is for your smartphone, Android and iOS, and it's a, it's a free download. And it interfaces with a handful of Sony cameras, uh, the A7, the A7R, uh, the new series from Sony, as well as the Sony NEX series, the 5R, the 6, the 5T, and uh, a handful of other Sony cameras. So I've downloaded the app. It's in the Play Store. If you search for uh, Sony Play Memories, you'll find it. And when you download it, this is the screen that comes up. It'll ask you to run the Wi-Fi function on your camera. So let me set this aside and we'll get the A7 set up here. If you're using an A7 or A7R, um, these instructions will apply to you. If you're using one of the NEX series cameras, it'll be a little bit different. Uh, but you'll go here to the, the menu and then over to the third option, which is your connectivity, and you'll select One Touch NFC. And then you'll be able to get here to the Play Memories camera apps. And, and this is where you'll need to go to download the Smart Remote Control app. And it's a free download from Sony. And it downloads to your camera just the similar way to how you download an app to your phone. Once it's installed, you'll see it here in the, in the uh, application menu. And then you'll do the same thing on your smartphone like we talked about. Go ahead and open them both up. And I am using a Sony smartphone that does have NFC. Um, but any Android or iOS phone will work. For the case of this one, I'm going to pair the two with NFC just by touching them together. So there we go. So it is connecting. And what this does is the camera sets up its own Wi Fi network. Um, here's the name of it here, and there's a password, um, and then a, a device name. And so when you pair them, what's essentially happening is the, the phone is connecting, instead of to your home Wi-Fi network, it's connecting to the camera. So we'll select the camera for this case, and it goes ahead and makes a Wi-Fi direct connection. And once that happens, you have all of your, well not all, but many of your camera settings available on your phone as well as a live viewfinder. So... Maybe I should have put a more wide angle lens on here, but uh, if we move this the camera around, you can see that my phone acts as the viewfinder for what the A7 is seeing. And it's uh, it, it does load in real time. It's, it's fairly fluid, not perfect, but uh, it does a decent job. Now I have the A7 in aperture priority mode right now, and so that lets me change a handful of settings here just by tapping on the screen on the smartphone without touching the camera. So for example, I can change my aperture all the way from, this one is an F4, all the way up to F22. And as I do that, you might see the screen change um, and it, it reflects the new aperture. You probably saw it dim a little bit because it's a, a narrower aperture. Put it back. I can also come in and change exposure compensation. So we can boost this up a little bit. On the A7 and A7R, you have a manual exposure compensation uh, dial here on the top. So I wanted to point that out because this digital control here does actually override the manual control when you have these two paired. So in my case, this is still set at zero, but changing the exposure comp on the phone, it is functional. You can see the, the change in the screen. And then ISO is the other option that I have in aperture priority mode. I can run this all the way up to 25,600, which uh, I, I'm never going to use. But if you wanted to, I'll go ahead and put it back to auto. And then another feature that I quite like is tap to focus. So when you just tap on the screen, you'll get your focusing. And it's reflected here on the viewfinder with your focal point 
um, of where you've focused. So that, that might be helpful if you're shooting at a faster aperture like f4 in this particular case, uh, where you want to have your foreground objects in focus and you know some nice focus, some nice depth of field, everything in behind behind that. Uh, and then tapping here will kill that focal point. So, and then, and then of course we can take a photo. There we go. And it'll pull the photo off the camera as a reduced file size. In this case, I have it set to two megapixel. And with that, just, just as we are right now, I can take this photo and share it. Uh, I can edit it with a, a program on my smartphone, like Snapseed, for example and then do whatever I want with it. It also, of course, saves it to the memory card in the camera. Uh, once we go into the settings menu, you can change that uh, image that it retrieves from the original size, which on a 24 megapixel camera like this is gonna be quite large. The, the JPEG, the compressed JPEG will be somewhere around six megs, uh, or we can get the two megabyte resized version of that image. In settings, we can also adjust white balance, uh, which doesn't appear down on the main screen. We can set the timer and then the review time. We have the ability to save it to the SD card here on the phone. So we're essentially saving it twice, once in full resolution to the camera, and then once in a reduced file size here on the phone for every picture that I take. We can also change the quality of the live preview, that's that's the viewfinder here on the phone, um, to get a better image quality if we want to. I don't think there's many cases where you'd need to do that. So just we'll take a quick look around the rest of the interface. Here in the top, you have your camera shooting mode. Like I said, I have this in aperture priority. If we change this on the camera, let's say we go to shutter speed priority mode, we'll select shutter, and now the, the camera has Change, or I'm sorry, the, the app has changed to reflect the shutter mode. And then instead of being able to manually change our aperture here, we can choose our shutter speed. So whatever we want all the way from, oops, from 30 seconds all the way up to the fastest, which is 1 8,000th. And when we change that, you'll see see how fast that dimmed uh, because 1 8,000th wouldn't do us much good here inside. 1 60th. Uh, here's one and a half seconds. Whoops. Help if I actually tapped it. So we have different functions here on the app, depending on the mode that we're in. Let's go ahead and put it to manual mode, which is what I shoot in a decent amount of the time. And you'll see that based on the previous settings, 1.6 seconds, F4, uh, it, it blows the image completely out. So. Now we have both control of aperture and shutter speed. In this case, let's go to 1 200th, and that gives us some of the image back at f4. So you can do all these functions without ever touching the camera. And I find that this will be extremely helpful for my purposes uh, because I, I do like to shoot a lot of low light photography, uh, a lot of star trails at night, Milky Way, uh, and especially in New Zealand where the stars appear very close, more so than they do here in the States. I, I plan to do a lot of nighttime photography. And that's one of the key times when you don't want to touch the camera at all. You, you don't want even the slightest motion or movement between shots. So this is what I'll be using. Uh, like I said, there, this is the Android version. There is an iOS version available. Uh, both apps are free. And as long as you have one of the compatible Sony cameras, uh, you'll be in business. So that's it for today. Uh, like I said, this is the first of many videos to come. If you'd like to keep up with my adventures in New Zealand and everywhere else, uh, I have quite the route planned around the world, covering about uh, 30,000 miles of flying time, at least 12 different countries, and uh, the A7 is what I'll be shooting with. I'm gonna be posting everything, photos, blog posts about the good and the bad and the ugly, uh, as well as tips and recommendations if you're traveling on the new website, backpackingearth.com. So I hope you'll check it out. You can also follow me on Twitter. And I'll put a link to that in the description. And if you have any questions, as always, feel free to let me know. So thanks for watching. See you next time.